um, Pardo, that's a Portuguese in the 12th century Portuguese word used for the darker races, and sometimes it meant an in-between color. So the poem is called Pardo, searching for a name. And uh, I wrote it for my mother, uh, Dolores, and my grandmother, and my great-grandmother. Gracias a Felina Sportsman. There was a name of distinction. Many syllables full of life, and she was. Named in gratitude for her father, Archibald, the horse trainer. He was a mythology except for his mundane death. A kick from the hoof of one he was paid to bend to the saddle. The horse and he now bound together in the story his daughter tells me when I'm a girl who's been taught all Indians are dead. But not the Iowa, whose name might mean dust or might mean gray. The Iowa are here, if only in his grateful daughter, and the earth she has carried through the cornfields past the burial mounds to me. And here in her name, sportsman called for his training of horses that can kill. This makes him real, opens the eyes of the Indians in my head. Now I understand why horses frighten me, restless hooves, untamed muscle, huge equine eyes full of mistrust. Will I be looking for retribution among them? of the great-great-grandfather I've lost. Gracias Archimena, sportsman. Small, not healthy it seemed, and losing her father so young, they married her off to another Indian half a nation away. And when he died, leaving her the one eye away in Massasoit territory, where she was told all the Indian nations were dead. Or at the very least, there had been too many of them to be named. From Gracias, the memory of horses faded like ink from paper until the time came for her to tell me her story. Lydia, sportsman, Mirandas, her daughter, there's a name. Her father from Massasoit territories, mother and daughter, light of two nations, and the name Lydia, called after one of the nieces who sat by the side of a sachem. As Gracias was solemn, Lydia sparkled. As Gracias toiled, relentless and solid, Lydia danced and sang. She was the tall, red one at the end of the chorus line among the black. The black ones paradoxically fair, testifying to the mixture required of entertainers. Mulatto, mestizo, pardo, no darker need apply. In the distance between Iowa and footlights, even with the years that grew between her and the corn, between her and the horses, Lydia, her skin earthly copper heated from within, kept her name always. She repeated the stories to me. Dolores, Mirandas, Minor, Leclerc, there's a name, a name that begins with sorrow, Dolores. Child of Lydia, my mother, although she discovered early the burden of a darker daughter was too much for her. As Gracias and Lydia were fire, warm as a hearth, and the stories told around them, Dolores was forever a girl, not to be encumbered. She was an infectious laugh, ringing in a room with too little furniture, no blankets or chairs, no place for a small child to hold on. But in the end, she was the one to pick up the trail of her fathers through New England sand dunes and grasses. She sifted and surfed, clicking on the strands of information while she still had eyesight, then touching and talking to those others with the stories. She was the one who yearned for that history to fill the empty room inside her. She pulled hand over hand, scaling the side of a mountain on a fragile thread until she found a name that was hers. 
There in cool eastern earth in the dust of history, among the faded writing on government paperwork, she found the Indians who were not dead. They saw her and the cornfields left behind, her and her grandfather with his ropes and hooves. They saw her and the women that came before. And taking away her sorrow, they named her Has No Horses has no horses, not because she was poor and blind, but in honor of her laugh. Has no horses because she had no need to go to people. They would come to her. Say her name out loud and hear her laughter, almost as warm as the story, big and round, full of textures and past. It may be the one I'll remember now that the women, my small nation, are all gone, and my name is still to come. I think all my poems are about naming. <laughs> so this one is called uh, The Naming Ka'ana to the Wuk. Uh, and it's for my sister friend, Minewa, who conducted uh, the ceremony. Deep, she said, not in a flaky way, like cool, or like we did in the 60s looking for meaning in random signs or birds or imagined voices. <laughs> Deep, as if cutting a channel through rock, shaping a new land. We met at the bed of my mother, dying with more grace than she had in life. Mother would always love strays more than me. She'd searched for our history and found a friend who guided her to grandmothers and to her name that had been stolen. When Puritans came ashore, discovering and divining, they determined to turn us to the suicide they called religion and burn our language along with the homes. They harpooned whales with ease and forgetfulness and overplanted the soil. But their great task, making the Bible into Wampanoag to complete our death. But it does yield one silver thing, a dictionary to rediscover our words and put them back onto the lips of children. The East is cold, and once an idea is frozen, it remains forever the same. Or it cracks and is lost, as it seemed were the Wampanoag, but we were not. Now we turn toward home with the ease of a horse staying on its path, the language of its road well trod. So we gathered in a New England yard, many colors and ages, to find my name, imagining the land 400 years ago, before synthetic fabrics and false fires. What we saw was a tree which hadn't borne leaves in many years, yet it stood firm, branches spread like a fertile net. She decided, deep, cutting channels, lifting my name from the air, laying it across my shoulders where it now sits as if it were always my own. Ka'ana to the book, still waters. <clears throat> this is, uh, last one is called More Than One. I was the quiet one except in school where I made the students laugh and the teachers cry. <laughs> Why was I so smart, they asked. So smart ass, wasting my talents for waitressing and typing by noticing history and spilling my regret onto their pages. I was the abandoned one, too dark for my mother, too fat to be a television star, too light for the black movement, too kinky hair for the tribe. I was the mixed one who spoke only of a single ingredient, fitting myself into the times, Ungawa, black power, leaving the rest for the movies. I was the femme one who could have sex with a vice cop or a diplomat to put myself through grad school. As long as I wasn't on the street, it felt just like a date. I was the queer.
queer one with no discernible type except butch. Black, white, brown, in no particular order. Then I was called by name and learned I was not a one. Still waters for moving slow through stone, leaving my trace embedded in rock, in sand, and on the pages of lies. Still waters who touches all shores, past and present, in my journey to the ocean, even as I seem unmoving. I am the history of all who have come before, Gracias, Lydia, Dolores, their mothers and fathers before them. I am not one, but many, carrying my shadows wrapped like a precious blanket around me, woven from Iowa, Wampanoag, and Cape Verde threads, wearing my wampum, not training it, still making some laugh and some cry.